So we've talked about spreadsheets a lot the past couple of weeks. So isn't it time we talk about the elephant in the room? Problems with spreadsheets. Because you must have encountered them in the exercises or maybe in your daily job with spreadsheets, you run into problems with spreadsheets. And it's not so surprising if you remember the numbers from the first week that 95% of all companies still use spreadsheets and that 50% of spreadsheets are used in decision making. And then of course it's not so surprising that problems arise and you remember maybe also that spreadsheets have a very long lifespan, five years on average, during which they are used by 12 different people and most spreadsheets do not have proper documentation. So there's actually no way, if you think about it, that this could go wrong, go right. If it's so important for companies and many people are involved, things are bound to get wrong and they just do. There even is a, a European spreadsheet risk interest group, usepreak.org, that keeps a list of spreadsheet horror stories. It's quite funny, if you have some time after the exercises of this week, I recommend you go there and have a look at a lot of companies and organizations that run into some kind of trouble from very small to very large problems because of spreadsheets. And I've compiled the most fun three spreadsheet horror stories. Here's one that I really like, the London Olympics in 2012. So you would expect the London Olympics, like the biggest event of the year with a gazillion pounds in budget, to have a very sophisticated ticketing system. They don't. They used spreadsheets to keep track of the tickets they've sold and they made a tiny mistake in one of their spreadsheets and this ended up by one of the stadiums being overbooked by 10,000 tickets. So it's not really money loss, but it was of course very embarrassing. People had to come into the ticket office to exchange their tickets for another day. So it's a really nice example of a spreadsheet horror story. Here's another one. A university in the US lost 2.4 million dollars because of a spreadsheet problem. And here's another one. A Canadian power company lost 24 million dollars because of a copy-paste error in a spreadsheet. So of course it's very easy to blame spreadsheets. You could say spreadsheets are just bad and this is why we have mistakes. But that's really not fair. This is not a typical spreadsheet problem. If you look at other domains, for instance programming, programming has very similar error rates to spreadsheet development. About 1 to 5 percent of all lines of code or all formulas have an error. And the same goes for other cognitive design activities like creative writing, also if you're writing you tend to make tiny mistakes. Just human brains aren't better than a 1 to 5 percent error ratio. And this is understandable and eh? if you look at problems in programming, very very similar type of horror stories exist, very recent horror stories in the programming domain. So here you have healthcare.gov, there recently were a few very big bugs like Heartbleed and the go-to fail. So you can't really blame spreadsheets for being problematic because other types of programming really run into very very similar problems. So why is that? Like everything, spreadsheets and software products start small. They start with small little cute puppies. You can easily manage them because they're still young and simple. Same goes with spreadsheets. You start off one worksheet, bunch of formulas, looks very cute, nothing is problematic. However, they all grow up to be this guy, right? If you don't train your dog and if you don't manage your spreadsheet or manage your software, everything will go wrong. So that's exactly what this week's video is are about. We will talk about how to manage your spreadsheet and make sure that it grows up into a responsible dog and not a crouch shredding monster. <laughs> 